I would never endorse this method. It's it's completely crazy. If you ask any of my friends or my husband, um, they will literally say that that the, nobody needs this amount of spreadsheets and notebooks. Power to live more with Joe Dodds. Welcome to the Power to Live More podcast, all about productivity, organisation, well-being, energy, and resilience. I'm Jo Dodds and I started this show to enable interesting people to share their stories about how they use their power to live more and by that I mean to do the stuff that they want to do more than the stuff that they need to or should do. It's about creating a life for yourself where you have the energy, health and space to be happy and fulfilled, spending your time as you'd like, whether that be at work, home or somewhere else entirely. That's your choice. Hello. My name is Ellie Dodds and I'm co-presenter and today Jo is interviewing Anastasia Wilson of Virtual Bird. Jo and Anna met via show guest number 18, Sophie Jury's Facebook group, Ladies That Plan, as they explain in the podcast. As you'll hear, they got on like a house on fire with lots of laughter throughout the recording. Anna's bio says, I'm Anna, I'm 24, I run Virtual Bird, a virtual assistant's business dedicated to saving small businesses time in my spare time i like to binge watch netflix craft and cuddle my doggo back to the studio today i'm interviewing anastasia wilson of virtual bird thank you for joining me anastasia i think uh, you like anna don't you we've been swapping notes on that (laughs) yeah anna that's perfect (laughs) less of a tongue twister for the purposes of an interview eh (laughs) Lovely. Just general day to day, it's easier. <laughs> yeah. So great to have you with me. Um, start by telling us who you are, uh, what you do, and uh, where you do it. Uh, so I'm Anna. I am 24. Um, I'm the virtual assistant which entails stuff like web design, social media management, um, bookkeeping, all the all the stuff that small business owners generally don't like doing. Uh, and I'm based in Mansfield in Nottinghamshire. Lovely. It does sound like blind date, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so um, great to have a virtual assistant on the show as, as much as anything else, because my third fundamental is all about sharing and that includes uh, outsourcing. So um, good to have someone who can tell us a bit more about how that can benefit people uh, when we get to that stage. So Absolutely. firstly, tell, tell us why you do what you do. How did you end up being a virtual assistant? One of my specialisms is uh, handmade small businesses so those that you know make stuff from their home ship it out one one man band sort of things um, and that's because I used to run one myself um, painted home decor and wooden gifts and stuff and in the end I just decided that I really was looking forward to doing the admin stuff more than the actual painting which I'm aware is quite strange um, <laughs> because most people don't like that bit um, so I was looking forward to doing spreadsheets and the marketing and planning and stuff and the painting became a chore um, and within within running that business I came um, to come across a lot of other small businesses and you know you kind of build up a rapport um, and it was sort of the consensus that small businesses tend to feel like they're a bit on their own and there's not a lot of support and guidance and um, it just appeared to me that they needed a helping hand and a guide to help them on their business journey Mm -hmm. Um, yeah so it made it made logical sense um, to go and do something that was my passion um, in admin because I'm a bit of a nerd I love spreadsheets organizing lists Um, but it was always in in my blood to to work for myself because my dad's a business owner um he does a very similar field to what i do so it's very within the family sort of thing but that's yeah yeah, that's how i started virtual bird i just love that you um that you were able to self-identify that you were doing um you know that your main business was actually the bit that that was becoming a problem (laughs) And that you started yes. it because you knew then what you enjoyed. I mean, that's what I, I speak about quite a lot, you know, how important it is to well, – in fact, I shared a post yesterday on uh, Facebook which came from my five-minute journal. It, it was a quote which was something like, you know, if you 
it's that bit about if you love what you do, then, you know, work. Oh, I can't even remember what the quote was now, but it's, you know, <laughs> think about you don't, you know, if you really enjoy what you're doing, then it doesn't count as work as such sort of thing. Yes. It's so, 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 I tell my clients this all the time. It's so important to enjoy what you do because if you don't, what's the point? Yes. Do you know what I mean? You're only, you're only, to quote the young kids these days, um, you only live once. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, why bother doing something you don't enjoy? So, I mean, I've been doing this for four years now. Um, and I can't imagine doing anything different. No, lovely. So how do you prioritise what you do in your work and your life then? So you, you have your own business. You've already decided it's the thing that you love, love, and you've dropped the bits that you don't enjoy so much. But how, how do you sort of get that integration, as I call it, between your work and your life? How, how do you sort of make that happen? Um, I use a lot of lists. This is going to be a, a recurring theme throughout this interview. I live by lists um and by by having it written down for me I'm able to see okay so I can't really um take on any more this week because a certain other aspect of my life will get neglected um for example and if if I'm having too much fun or I'm not working hard enough I can see well I'm not contributing towards my business so I, I really really um prioritize basically by having a graph that shows so I'm doing what 50% work 50% life balance so to speak and that's what we all aim for isn't it really mm -hmm. um, so do you actually visualize that that split between work and life is it, it, I mean I talk about integration so I sort of I, I do a bit of this a bit of that and, and I'm not particularly organized about it but, but are you very clear about those differences yes very um, I mean, I got the Ultimate Diary Planner um, by a company called The Ladies That Plan for my birthday, and there's space in it to sort of draw. So at the end of each week, I draw a pie chart, and I chart how my time was spent during that week. So I can easily see, for example, I've got the planner in my hand now. So, for example, last week, um, it was pretty much an even split. But if it's not, I can look and then shift that for the following week so that I'm hitting all the targets I need to. Um, right. Because if you don't, I feel, if, well, for me anyway, if you don't keep a track on your work-life balance, it's easy to say, yeah, but I've done, you know, I've done this much work so I can have a little bit of fun and you're not really making time for what's important. Mm -hmm. So I was just trying to remember how we met and I think it must have been through Sophie Jury's group because Sophie was on the podcast I don't know, a couple of years ago, um, and I know we connected through Facebook and something, a discussion that we, we'd obviously had, and I felt compelled to get you on the show, so I bet that must be where it was from. Yes, yes, it was. Um, there was a post about, um, it was the Marketing Monday post, and you posted one of your blogs. Ah, yes. And that, because I'm all about productivity and, and stuff yeah. like that, we got yeah. chatting about it. So, yeah, it. that's where it came from. Ah, that's the one. So so tell us more about how you manage your to-do list then. You, you said lists are important and they're going to crop up throughout this conversation. <laughs> so you're using the, the Ultimate Diary Planner. So shout out for Sophie there. Um, how, how, how do you make that work? Do you have one list? Do you have lots of different lists? How does it go? <laughs> well, <laughs> <Here> we go. <laughs> I have my Ultimate Diary Planner for my work stuff. I have a notebook for general notes, um, like life projects and stuff. Um, I have a writing notebook. So like if I'm having a conversation with somebody and I write down in, in the notebook so that I can come back and refer to it. I have a life spreadsheet, a work spreadsheet, um, obviously like budget spreadsheets and stuff. Um, I use Asana, Toggle and to-do list. <laughs> to-do list, sorry. Um, there are about six, six, seven different places where my life is literally charted down. And the reason I do that is because if I don't, I'm going to forget something. Yeah. So everything is everywhere. So it's interesting because I think sometimes when as productivity people speak, we can sort of scare people, overwhelm them and make them think, um, you know, that people who are perhaps less interested in such things that um, it all sounds very complicated. But it's interesting because I do a similar thing to you. I have different 
places for managing different bits of what I, I do. And that's because I, I take a sort of dice and slice attitude to lots of things, which is, you know, to, uh, it enables me to sort of simplify things and be quite clear about um, how things fit together rather than everything being a one big lump, if you like. But I do always that's say it's about being individual, you know, so what suits you? So I guess probably what, what we need to say to listeners is what we do may not suit <laughs> everybody oh yeah oh no I would never endorse this method it's it's completely crazy if you ask any of my friends or my husband and um, they will literally say that that the, nobody needs this amount of spreadsheets and notebooks <laughs> I got nine for Christmas because I've got that much of a of a um I cannot find the word I'm looking for <laughs> uh reputation that's the word um I've got that much of a reputation between um, my friends and family that I got nine notebooks for Christmas. Yeah. Nobody needs nine notebooks. And the thing is, I use them all. Um, but it's all about what works for the individual person in terms of how they want to organise their life. Because yeah. my chaotic craziness won't work for everybody. Mm. I mean, it barely works for me, so... <laughs> <laughs> Somebody once told me if I spent as much time doing work as I did organising myself, I'd be even better. And I think they were probably right. <laughs> <laughs> I completely agree. Especially since I got um, Sophie's planner because it everything's just so pretty. Yes. And I, I spend a lot of time making the planner look pretty when I could actually be doing something actually productive. <laughs> so props to Sophie for, um, you know, giving procrastination um, a platform. <laughs> yes although I, I'm a, a big proponent of uh, uh what do I call it intentional procrastination and in fact I had a great example of it this week in that I've been putting off sorting out my websites and my social media profiles around a change in my sort of um focus over the last few months and mm. I've actually had a major epiphany and now realized what I need to do and now I can move forwards with it all and I thought I was procrastinating um you know just because of whatever but actually I do think it was because I just didn't really know what I wanted to do and now I do and it, it'll you know move forwards quite quickly now so so let's not say that all procrastination is bad <laughs> <laughs> I like that idea I'm not actually putting off doing this task it's you're it's just thinking on oh, that's <laughs> <laughs> that might be one of my new um new mottos there joe i like that one <laughs> <laughs> lovely so you've started to mention tools and apps i'm sure you've got tons that you'd recommend what are you what are your top three <laughs> yeah i was gonna say I've been, i kept it to three when i was writing out very um, good <laughs> what, what to say um so i use asana which is what i managed solely for work because it's it's easy to navigate and it's really accessible and my clients can um join a project and that can be easily managed mailchimp is another one um every business should have a mailing list and i yap on about this all the time and if any of my clients are listening if they don't know that by now i'm not doing my job well enough <laughs> um, and wordpress because it's so flexible and it's so um, user friendly it enables any size small business to have a, a functional aesthetically friendly um, and useful website so they're they're my top three and I use them every single day in my job so, yeah. yeah yeah me too and do you, know, and do you know when MailChimp first came out I absolutely hated it but I had to use it for Engage for Success which is a, um, the national not-for-profit that I do the sort of uh, behind the scenes stuff for and uh, I hated it um, but now I find it so much easier than the other option that I use for my own stuff so I guess mm. either I've got used to it or it's improved over the years. <laughs> <laughs> no it's they're always innovating yeah. they're always adding ways to make it better and and I don't know if it's because I use it that much but I don't really think about what I'm doing anymore in, in the sense that they've made it so easy if you know what I mean yeah. it's not a chore no no and for me I think the, the apps that I like the best are the ones that enable integration with others so the reason I use yeah. MailChimp apart from Engage for Success is for my choir because I use um, Capsule CRM to ha um, hold the database and actually I can add people automatically into my MailChimp list for the choir through their integration so I do find the more I go along that the more that tools allow other people to integrate with them the, the better I think they they work I mean obviously you can use things like Zapier and IFTTT but 
it's so much easier when it's automatically set up isn't it it is absolutely and they're, they're great especially with integrating with wordpress mm. um among many others and it's just so simple with a simple api key there's no faffing about no third parties it's no. yeah cool mm. so let, let's move on to the sharing bit then so you're somebody who is available to help other people to get stuff done that's the nature of your business do you have people who yeah. help you uh yes my well i uh, yes and no i mean actual physically doing stuff no um but there are different ways to help people so for example my husband um he is a little superstar i will often sit and talk to him about stuff that sort of goes straight over his head um <laughs> But he'll sit there and he'll smile and he'll nod and he'll add completely usually irrelevant solutions but just by sitting and talking to him it often um gets me the answers that i need um so with what i do a lot of the things i do if i struggle i call them puzzles yeah um, so if i'm trying to rewrite a line of code or you know there's a there's a problem that I'm troubleshooting with a website, for example. I say, I'm stuck on a puzzle. Let me talk you through it. And he, he often doesn't know what I'm on about, but he's like there with a cup of tea and I can just bounce ideas off him and he's brilliant. Um, yeah. And my dad, because he's in a similar industry, um, it's usually coding with my dad. But if I come to him and I say, look, I've tried everything I possibly know can we work on this little bit together and see if we can fix it? And he's, he's always more than happy. And he's, um, because he's been in the business for pretty much my entire life, he's done computers. Yeah. Um, he's always there to sort of advise and he's my little business mentor. So <laughs> yeah, they're, they're both invaluable in business. They really are. And yeah. life, obviously. <laughs> they're, they're not just there for my business um, needs. <laughs> Excellent. So um, what about um, tips for, for delegating and outsourcing, but thinking about it in terms of people doing that to you, that, that would be a good way for you to respond to this, wouldn't it? So your clients, yeah. when they're outsourcing to you, what makes it work best for them? They have to be ready. Um, they have to be comfortable with it because a lot of people struggle to rel relinquish control. Um, so they have to be comfortable and ready and it can take some getting used to it's bound to feel strange at first especially if you've been in business for a while because you're used to calling the shots you're used to literally everything falling on you if you know what I mean mm -hmm. um, so it it can take some adjusting but the best place to start is with a list of everything you do within your business so checking your emails, posting on social media, updating the website. It's best to start with like a, an average day in the life of a small business owner. Um, and then they can send that to me and I can say, I can help with that. Um, or if I can't, I can say, here's a better way of going about this to make it more productive for you. Um, and then we can discuss what they can outsource and delegate and stuff. And then the, the end goal is basically leaving them with a list of what they love to do and then let me uh handle the rest essentially yeah um they've definitely definitely got to be ready for it yeah yeah i love that idea again though of you know doing that list and then and then only doing the things themselves that they want to be doing and that they outsource the rest of it i mean that that's really um you know why they should be doing it apart from you know getting more done and all you know getting it done more accurately and all those other things it's about keeping the stuff that's really about you and, and your talents isn't it and and getting other people that's, to do the rest that's right and it really does help their their well-being and their their mental health in a way because they're not you know if you're faced with a task you really don't want to do you don't feel comfortable doing it um you absolutely hate it your your well-being and your mental health is bound to be affected by that and a lot of what i do is because i want to make people's life easier um the fact that i absolutely enjoy it because i'm a weird little nerd is completely irrelevant yeah. as long as my clients are happy and you know they can focus on their passions and what they love and, and their family and it's just giving them time back really isn't it yes yeah well-being music to my to my ears <laughs> so that's <laughs> also a nice segue into the self-care section which is about your own well-being so 
how do you keep yourself healthy and and how do you relax and how do you sort of make sure that you're the best you can be for what you need to do um so relaxing uh, i love i love gardening um i i like to think of myself as a 90 year old trapped in a 24 year old's body <laughs> um, love it <laughs> Because most of um, the the friends my age, you know, they're out in town and partying and I literally cannot think of anything worse. I would rather be sat in my chair, crocheting, watching historical royal family dramas and drinking some hot chocolate. <laughs> that is that is the epitome for me. But I love gardening, uh, spending time with my family, crafting. If there's basically any craft, I will I will try it. You ought to see my spare bedroom. <laughs> I reckon um, you'll be out raving when you're in your 90s. You'll you'll get it going the other way around, won't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, can you imagine? Oh my goodness, that's it's exhausting thinking about it. Honestly, um, I I keep healthy. Uh, my dad's teaching me how to cook because for some reason I've got to the age of 24 and don't really know how to cook. Um, <laughs> And as a wife now, <laughs> I sort of feel like I ought to feed my husband every now and again. Um, so this year I've been learning to cook and people are actually requesting my food now. So it can't be too bad. That's good. Um, I try and get enough sleep and I practice self-care. So I, I'm aware of, um, you know, my limits. In you know, if you kind of wake up and you go, I really, really, really need some time today to just do nothing and rest and sleep i take it because it's so easy to get burnt out um so i'm aware of that which i suppose is about mindfulness and being aware of sort of how important your physical and mental health is yeah so important but how do you balance that with providing a service in your business because duvet days are great when you do it doesn't matter and nobody needs your help but you probably have lots to do. <laughs> I do, I do. And but the way I manage my schedule means I have the flexibility to take mental health days if I need them. Yeah. Um I don't work weekends and I try not to work in the evening. But if I say if I wake up one day and I'm like, I really, 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 really need a mental health day today, my schedule usually gives me the flexibility to do that. Um and it's I mean, a lot of my clients are brilliant. So if if there was something that, you know, needed doing that day and I just, it wasn't my day, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, they're generally quite understanding in the fact that, you know, they're small business owners too and they get that life happens. Mm. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, that's really good, to, really good to hear. I don't think people take that as seriously as, it, as they should do. And, and it's certainly, it was partly why I started focusing on you know the power to live more stuff anyway um but I wasn't that good at it but I've I've certainly you know really tried to craft my life to suit all those things as well as get get the job done as well um tends to go out the window when I have client corporate clients because they're a bit nine to five and that doesn't really fit with, with my <laughs> plan <laughs> yeah I feel you there yep yeah. um have you sort of have to <laughs> oh god no <laughs> you kind of have to when you're marketing and stuff you you make clients aware that you know your routine's a bit abnormal sort of thing <laughs> but it can be crafted towards them so it's yeah. you know it's, it's you you twist it I suppose yeah I do need to work out a, a, a suitable way of explaining to, to corporate clients that I only do afternoons that would that would work really well for me <laughs> <laughs> You're not a morning person then, Joe. <laughs> Say again. You're not a morning person then. No, 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 no. I'm. Uh, I'm very. If you've ever read The Power of When, I'm very much a wolf. And this side of Christmas, for some random reason, I, I'm getting worse. So I'm staying up later and getting up later, which is fine when I have, you know, clients and and uh, home based business owners and and you know stuff that I can do in my own time. But uh, yeah, when I have to turn up at nine o'clock to start running a workshop. <laughs> doesn't quite work so well <laughs> no I can imagine yeah I'm not I'm not morning I don't know what kind of person I am at the minute but I'm not generally a morning person no sometimes you have to you know, so yes exactly yeah. well I'm just I'm leading into half term at the moment and I'm away because I was we're, we're going to be away as a family and um 
I'm already at the place where we're going to be staying. So I decided to stay this week on my own. So it's been lovely. I've been doing completely my own thing, but I've been thinking that I need to start sort of ratcheting my going to bed and getting up times back a bit so that by the time we get back from half term, I'm actually ready to <laughs> start doing my corporate stuff again. Otherwise, it's going to all go horribly wrong. So what about um, learning and, and improving yourself? And, you know, do you, do you read? Do you listen to podcasts? Do you, I don't know, how do you, what do you do to, to push the envelope for yourself? Um, I'm very much a person that can't do one thing at once. Um, so I'm always doing something else at the same time, if that makes sense. So yeah. if I'm working, I've got a podcast on. Um, you know, I, I always like to improve and make the most of my time and that usually comes down to um doing a skill at the same time it drives my husband mental because i can't i can't just watch something i have to be doing something else at the same time yeah um so i'm currently learning spanish um <clears throat> and guitar because he's at played... the same time <laughs> yes <laughs> yes i'm there and they're like oh laugh do, 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 do. <laughs> don't include that <laughs> That was terrible. <laughs> um, yeah, my husband has played guitar pretty much all his day, and he is incredible. He is absolutely brilliant. And it sort of occurred to me that, you know, we've been together for eight years now, and if I'd have started learning when we got together, I'd be pretty good too. So, you know, mm -hmm. catching up on that. In business, I'm always learning and undertaking professional development. It's so important, especially with the industry that I'm in, to stay on top of all the legislation and the new rules and, you know, um, particularly this year with GDPR coming in, yeah, there's always yeah. something to learn about. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm always I'm always doing something. <laughs> yeah. Sound like me? I'm always multitasking. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> lovely. So, what about routines, rituals, habits? I, again, I imagine there's there's some of that stuff going on from what you've already told me. Is there are there things that you do? at certain times of the day or every day or um as a sort of ritual i've just i've just had my cup of coffee that's one of my rituals <laughs> what, what yeah, do you do? I mean, I, the only thing that that is pretty much guaranteed in my day is that i will write in some sort of notebook or planner everything else is um variable it yeah. depends on what's on the list it depends on you know what what needs my time that day so for example today's been quite a bizarre day it's been nothing like my usual routine at all uh, i'll always start writing in my planner and my notebook because they get me on track with the day but everything else is variable yeah um there's yeah. nothing that's ever really concrete um apart from in the evening me and my husband sit and watch the chase because you know it's what we do but <laughs> no i'm quite a, a variety person i don't particular that's not even a real word is it variety <laughs> it works for me so so what do you do with your with your journal planner thing do you, do you actually plan the day or do you just write gratitude stuff do you do you offload you know how, how are you using that to start the day um i write down exactly what uh needs doing that day so for example today i've got podcast with joe yes <laughs> um it's my mama's birthday so there's visit my mama on there um there's a variety of tasks for different clients check emails stuff like that it's, yeah. it's all what i must do and because because in sophie's planner there's not tick boxes um i can end the day when all the tick boxes are clear yeah so that's keeps me accountable basically mm, mm, lovely okay what about if um things don't go right what about those days where it all goes a bit pear-shaped how do you deal with that um <laughs> after screen well, <laughs> well i tend to sit by the fridge um i don't know why i just go and sit in the kitchen and i sit by the fridge and my husband will generally bring me a cup of tea and we'll talk it out but if he's not here i have to be an actual adult um i find out why i take on board feedback uh i fix mistakes and in every single thing i do um i take a plan do and review approach um, so I can build on things, even if they go right. So, for example, I will I will start a task by planning it, then I'll do it, and then I will I will always review how the task went, how it can be improved, um, if anything went wrong, how to fix it in the future, how to make the task more productive, um, and by doing that, mistakes very rarely happen. 
um but it's always there's nothing wrong with something not going right if you know what i mean yeah it's absolutely fine for things to go wrong as long as you learn from it and yeah. you you approach the situation with um professionalism and you know dignity there's no point shouting and screaming and, and you know as long as you you work to improve then that's absolutely fine yeah yeah so it's funny you've <laughs> i don't think anyone's ever told me they go and sit by their fridge but i thought i think that's a um an illustration of um our own perspectives on things because i'm guessing your fridge next to your fridge is a much more attractive place to be than next to mine <laughs> um, no not really it's, i mean we're renovating so it's all a bit chaotic at the minute i think the fridge comes from it's just a place yeah it's a place yeah. where you know you well i yeah i mean you don't sit in front of my fridge that'd be a bit weird <laughs> But I sit in front of my fridge and, and I've got a beagle and he'll come over and, and you know, the three of us will just sit there and, and you know, you compose yourself. And once yeah. you compose, you, you leave the fridge. And I don't know. I don't know. It's, so you do I'm have a, a ritual. You have a bad day ritual involving the fridge and the beagle and your husband. See? <laughs> yeah. If you've not gathered by this point, Joe, I'm a tad quirky. Um, <laughs> but honestly next time you don't feel like you can you can tackle things and it's all going wrong go and sit by the fridge i'm going to try that i'm adding that to my list of uh, of strategies <laughs> for such days <laughs> honestly it's bizarrely comforting and <laughs> it gives me a bit of clarity it gives me a minute to say okay this is all going a bit wrong it's fine take a breath have a cup of tea here's how we're going to fix it or here's how we're going to overcome this problem yeah and yeah I mean, you could use a normal place like a chair, but it's not the same. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm ever so excited about my next question then. So on a day when you end the day knowing that you've had the chance to live more, and I talk about that being a day where you've got to do the things you want to do rather than the stuff you feel you should do or you have to do, what have you done? What does that day look like for you? <laughs> That's... That's an interesting question um, because, and it might help to give you a little bit of background here, um, I suffer from mental health difficulties. Um, I have anxiety disorder and um, I struggle to go out on my own. And for me, having a day where I lived more would be um, achieving a step towards what, what would be my normal if that even exists um so you know we want to go on holiday and you know um general day-to-day -day stuff and for me living more is that so yesterday uh, wednesday is my cooking lesson with my dad um and we've started going to aldi the supermarket other supermarkets are available <laughs> <laughs> um and at the start of the year when he suggested it that was like i cannot do that i cannot go to a supermarket it's that's terrifying absolutely not yeah. and yesterday yeah. you know it, it it's become fun and it's become easy and for me that's that's something where i've lived more just living for me yeah because i can if you know what i mean i went through a period of not leaving the house at all for three years um wow and i really I really didn't live at all. It, it was, it's no quality of life. You can't do anything. You don't really see anybody. And now any sort of um, engagement, leaving the house or people coming here, um, it, it's living more to me. As long as you're making the most of life and you feel um, contented and like you've pushed yourself just a little bit, that's, that's what I aim for in a day, to be honest. Wow. Thank you, Anna. That was a really honest, quite humbling answer to that question. So I really appreciate you being honest there. Well, so I'm, I'm always going to be honest about my mental health because there's no point saying, at the end of the day, I live more by skydiving because, A, I'm terrified of heights and, B, that would be a lie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I just, anything that, that sort of is a step closer you know to my goal and a step further away from where i used to be is is quite happy with me i'm quite happy with very simple things and um just going for a walk with my husband or chilling out with my dad anything like that is is living more for yeah, me yeah 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 really i really get that and um as i say you know lovely answer to that question so thank you so how can people find out more about you and connect with you 
Um, I can be found on Facebook, Twitter, and my website. If you just search Virtual Bird into the search engine of your choice, I'm very certain I'll pop up somewhere. <laughs> um, you can also join my um, Virtual Birds business support group um, on Facebook, which is also linked on my Facebook page as well. Um, and if anybody has any questions about, you know, outsourcing or they just want to chat about the fridge, they can always feel free to email me um, at uh, hello at virtualbird.co.uk and I'm always happy to have a chat about somebody. That's brilliant. Uh, yeah. Thank you. And do let me know if someone contacts you about the fridge. <laughs> I really, really hope they do. And I hope it's somebody saying, look, I tried it and it's brilliant. <laughs> Because that will just validate my entire life existence. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Do you know, it's, it's funny when you have these conversations, how much it connects with other things. So I just posted something literally about 10 minutes before we came online, which was um, uh, Oprah Winfrey. And she was talking about how the only thing that's important to us in life is validation. And I thought, yeah. how funny you've just said that. Um, and the bit about... Um, uh, well, so much of what you've said today has really sort of resonated. Oh, and I hate that word. I can't believe I've just used it. But anyway, I have um, with so much of what I've been thinking about myself and my business this week. So really appreciate you joining me. Really enjoyed the conversation. And um, thank you. Yeah, it's absolutely my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me, Joe. All this information is available in the show notes on my website. If you use the link powertolivemore.com forward slash, in this case, 54, you'll be able to find those. And there, the website is the place to go if you want to find out how I can help you to improve your productivity, organisation, wellbeing, energy and resilience, your power to live more. And that's do more of what you want to do. You might also be interested in finding out more about my course which is called how to simplify your life and get to do more of what you want and uh, that includes a number of exercises around firstly being clear about the time that you've got available the things that you actually want to do the things that you don't want to do uh, it looks at uh, creating motivation it talks about how to say no once you do know what you want to do so that you can align your activity with what you have planned that you want to do and, and lots of other uh, useful exercises as well. It's very interactive. There's an opportunity to share your thoughts and questions with me through the course and um, work through it at your own pace. You get access to different sections of it each week over a four week period. So you shouldn't be overwhelmed by that content, but actually you get access to that ongoing anyway. So you don't have to complete it in the four weeks. If you'd like to find out more about that, then if you go to engagementandwellbeing.com forward slash simplify so that's engagementandwellbeing.com forward slash simplify then you can find out more about that and uh, potentially sign up if you're interested again the notes from this podcast can be found if you follow the link power to live more.com forward slash 54 and we look forward to speaking with you next week use your power to live more